All right, good evening, everyone. It's five o'clock, so we'll go ahead and call our Utilities Service Board meeting to order. As a reminder, our City of Bloomington Utilities mission is to enhance the quality of life in our community by providing safe, sustainable, and high quality drinking water, wastewater, and stormwater services in a cost-effective manner, promoting public health, economic vitality, and environmental stewardship. And as a reminder, if any board member has any personal or financial conflict with any issues or individuals on the agenda, then please be sure to recuse yourself during those portions of the meeting. Our first item on the agenda is petitions and communications. Do we have any public comment? Hearing none, our approval of the minutes from our September 9th meeting. Are there any questions or corrections? Yes. Um, I wasn't listed as board members present. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Any, anything else? Hearing no other corrections, do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the September 9th meeting? So moved. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have approval of the claims. First, we have standard invoices in the amount of $1,294,532.64. Are there any questions? Yes. I have three questions. Yeah. <clears throat> um, first one's core and main at the bottom of page two. Uh, annual fee for pressure profile application, V045479. What's the pressure profile application? The pressure in our system so we're able to monitor and water. track that yes does it affect wastewater at all wait all of our meters are how we bill wastewater so yeah so we bill wastewater through our water meters well, sure well. but but this is just for pressure profile application I was just yeah. wondering why it's billed to to wastewater as well it, it seems like this is a purely water function we can change that it's easy uh, to fix. Uh, yeah. We try to keep these separate, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So just one, th so that's number one. And then um, I had one other question about a water versus wastewater. And it was um, for, oh, let's see, McAllister, Jacoby. Um, oh, the next one's Jacoby Carbons, yeah. So a couple pretty big expenses for uh, extra types of carbon. Um, is, and that's a temporary thing for taste and odor, the two Jacoby car Carbon um, charges. Yes, right now we are on the more expensive carbon, um, and it should just be a water charge. So what? I think you just it is, to oh, yeah. The price, right? Yeah, it's more expensive right now because it's the coconut carbon. Yeah, that wasn't a uh, a water wastewater one. The other, the one that was wastewater water was McAllister. Um, this is just a question about the billing number. Um, McAllister Machinery. It's the last one on uh, page. What is it? Six. Um, so generator at East Booster Station, got that, so it's water. Um, and then it listed as LS, is that lift station? Is the LS for lift station? So yeah, this nomenclature confuses me because you know, booster station for water, lift station for, for wastewater, is that typically what we refer to things as? So why would, why would this be an LS for a booster station? If you put both the boosters and the lift stations in, in the same tracking pile, so okay. we, it's just a designation that we've made. Correct. Correct. Thank I just yep. had never noticed before. Those are all my questions. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a few. Um, first, on page two, just, I guess, more of a comment. I know that we're looking at our, um, our um, oh, I've totally drawn a blank. But what we um, do with the city every year um, are not a member of understanding, but please help me. Interlocal agreement, thank you. Um, and talking about like our expenses with our vehicles and things. I know we talked about that last okay. month and I just wanted to kind of note, well, here were two expenses with Bloomington Ford for vehicle service Correct. maintenance. So I just wanted to have that on there. And then I had a question on page nine with the state of Indiana for the unemployment. Um, I've I'm not, maybe I've just missed this before, um, but what, what is that about? Do we have, um, I guess we have someone if that we're playing unemployment for. Yeah, if we have employees that leave that qualify for unemployment, uh, the utility is a pay as we go entity. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever they pay that out, we have to reimburse them for that money. Okay, yep. that doesn't happen very often here, does it? Um, no, I wouldn't. Okay. I mean, all right. 
Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the standard invoices? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have utility bills in the amount of $95,976.18. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have wire transfers in the amount of $469,527.88. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have customer refunds in the amount of $2,399.88. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, we have a special check run in the amount of $4,303.25. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have approval of the consent agenda. Catherine Zager. Good evening. I'm Catherine Zager, Utilities Director. I'm presenting tonight's consent agenda pending controller approval, totaling $21,476. The first contract is with Price Electric, Inc., $6,560 for circuit installation for new tower equipment at the Kinzer Pike Skate Park. Uh, B is for Electric Plus Inc. for $4,995 for the installation of generator switch at the West Booster Station. Next is with Industrial Air Centers Inc. for $4,431 for the repair of two air compressors at the Monroe Treatment Plant. And finally, the last one is with Eco-Friendly Mechanical Inc. for $5,490 for an air conditioning unit at the Washington Street Warehouse. Is there any member who wishes to consider one or more of these items individually? Hearing none, if there is no opposition, these items will be approved as recommended by staff. Hearing no opposition, the consent agenda is approved. Thank you. Next on our agenda is request of approval for an MOU between CBU and ITS for upgrades at Blucher Pool. Mark Minifee. Mark Minifee, utility engineer. This uh, memo of understanding is between CBU and ITS for the upgrades at uh, Blucher Pool. The uh, work associated uh, is with the project to upgrade the control systems at Blucher. We're going to install a new fiber optic cable and existing conduit. We're going to replace network switches that help communicate between the control panels. ITS is going to manage this work. Um, they're going to quote this out and contract the cable installation, and they will purchase, configure, and install the network switches, and then CBU will pay the invoices when the work is complete. Okay. Thank you. Questions for Mark? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the MOU between CBU and ITS for upgrades at Blucher Pool? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have request for approval to find Hepico LLC to not be a responsible bidder. Chris Wheeler. Uh, this is a rare uh, instance on the agenda. Uh, we have reached an impasse with Hepico with regards to uh, certain uh, limitations of liability, um, indemnification, uh, insurance policy claim, uh, the insurance policies that would need to be in place. And so when that happens and we can't reach a, a, an actual, and we can't enter into a contract, we can't agree on the terms, uh, we need to come back to the board and ask for the board's uh, finding that the, the, the uh, who we had originally tapped as the winning bidder is not responsible. Uh, so when the board does that, we can then move to the next uh, bidder in the list of those who had actually put their bids in for this particular project. And so that's what we're here asking for tonight. It's a little unusual. Uh, in fact, it's the first time I've done this in 10 years. So, um, uh, but that's what we're asking for tonight. And I'm happy to try and answer questions. Thank you. Questions for Chris? 
an entity that's not a responsible bidder, does it does it mark them for future bids, or is it strictly for this individual contract? Uh, it doesn't put them on a. L you know, I don't know the answer to that uh, as far as how the city, as a citywide entity, would treat this particular uh, contractor. Um, I'm not sure what the controller does because all of these, all of our contracts go through the controller for review and approval. Uh, and again, this is the first time I've seen this. Um, I suspect that probably they're going to be on a short list of companies to watch out for if they are bidding on other projects because of this issue that we're having. I, I can't think that it would be unique if we're having it here at utilities. It's likely that if they were looking to try and find business at other departments that maybe we'd run into the same problems. All of the departments have basically, um, we have a pretty standardized set of terms and conditions that we expect to see on the contracts regardless of the department. So it probably does have a negative effect on them uh, citywide. I doubt that it goes beyond the walls of the city though. I don't know how it would unless somebody decided to pick up the phone and call and ask us. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Other questions for Chris? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the request to, for approval to find HEPACO LLC to not be a responsible bidder? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have old business. Do we have any old business from the board? Old business from staff? No. no. New business from the board? Yes. Just want to report on... on uh, the meeting that I attended of our uh, uh, cybersecurity staff uh, group and met uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, it was an informative meeting. I wanted to just bring back to the board that there are such meetings that occur with our staff at least quarterly to uh, discuss ways that the utility can continue its efforts to strengthen our cybersecurity for the um, all of our different systems. There's a lot of points, and um, uh, I think it was a really productive meeting from the input and discourse the staff had about different things, developments uh, coming along the line. Uh, a few things of just highlights. Uh, they're participating in a Indiana Utility Regulatory Survey about uh, the status of, of uh, utilities throughout the state. Uh, Lots of uh, discussion about all of our different SCADA uh, applications, as you might imagine. Um, in our 25 budget, there will be a new staff person for instrumentation and control specialist, which will help us uh, with some of, be able to study some of these issues and stay up to date, more so in cybersecurity, which is a good thing. Um, I also uh, kind of realized in the meeting uh, we had a couple of representatives present from the city IT staff and how dependent CBU is in connecting together with the larger city city government, Bloomington uh, Municipal uh, Civil City IT staff, and that close relationship between the two is important because just as it's so important for the utility to have uh, a robust system that uh, is secure, it's just as important for civil city. and. Um, the two are of the same mind on that, and that's, that's good. They can help each other um, in, in those efforts. And, um, and let's see, we talked uh, about uh, how often cybersecurity is training, training is required for, how often it's required for staff members and, and uh, whether it's just onboarding or on a regular basis and things like that to, you know, to stay up to date on uh, different scams and phishing uh, emails and things like that. So it looks like we're on a pretty good path. There's always more work to be done because, boy, in the last couple of weeks, we've learned um, we've learned a lot on the international scene about how um, our adversaries can do bad things when it comes to um, um, all sorts of of cyber infrastructure. So it's important that we stay vigilant as well. And so long as you all allow me, I'll continue, along. I'll continue to go to these uh, meetings and report back and try to share ideas between uh, uh, past experience and uh, some things the university's doing as well. 
So there you go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for attending. Thank you to our staff for um, inviting her to the meeting and um, for the great report and the things that you're doing every day. Um, which kind of along those lines, um, similarly maybe, we had a great property and planning meeting, um, was it just two weeks ago? And um, I know we just raced to get through the agenda, and although it's not, I'm uh, Kirk, you're the chair of that committee, but I think we'd like to, to get together again when it, um, at a time that's convenient for our staff, because I know that you guys spend a lot of time preparing for that, um, but um, if we could get like another subcommittee agenda or planned on the agenda, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, I just had one thing. I really enjoyed the hydrant flushing need to know. I had to look up NTK, but that stands for need to know. It was posted on our uh, Facebook page today and I really enjoyed the video. And so I think that's a great way to communicate all the great things that happen here at CBU and out in the community. And I learned about the auto flushing hydrants, which I thought were really cool. And I didn't know about those. So I've not seen one. There's not one in my area, but maybe there's one in your neighborhood. So. Um, anyway, uh, that's that's that. Any other um, new business from the board? Okay, new business from staff. No, okay. Um, there were no subcommittee reports this week, so um, staff reports. For our staff report, we would like to welcome Ashley Craner, our assistant and accounts payable clerk. Uh, we'd also like to give some congratulations out. We had 18 employees from Dillman Engineering Finance and Environmental Programs complete their CPR, AED, and right. first aid certifications. Uh, Adam Dishman earned his wastewater operator class four license. And Cassandra Allen earned her uh, surface water production one certification. Yeah. Sounds like a great two weeks. Congratulations. Thank you for everybody for putting in the time and effort to get those certifications. Okay. Any other staff reports? No. Okay. Uh, petitions and communications from the public. We, we, ha we had a, a memo sent and, and we haven't discussed that. How are we gonna do that? Are we gonna ask, are we gonna have a discussion today? <laughs> I mean, I see the yeah. deputy mayor's here. Or are we? Um, yeah. Absolutely. So um, if you have questions, you can bring it up, um, could bring it up in new business or um, well, we're past all yeah, that now. we're past so new we business. Were, we were just anticipating that to come up. But yeah, so we're yeah. at petitions and communications. We could do now, this so at petitions that's, that's and now. communications. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Does anybody want to start? I guess I, I guess we thought maybe there would be a uh, start from this so, end. So. Sure, okay. yeah. Um, I can just say that there was a memo sent to the board from the Office of the Mayor, um, kind of further explaining how uh, annexation for the city is working in regards to sewer connections. There have been um, some appeals that have come to the board. There's been a lot of discussion and Overall, I think the point of this memo was to clarify a lot of points of either confusion or questions that were lingering. Um, and so we're open to um, taking any of the board's questions concerning that memo. I know it was sent earlier today, so we haven't had a lot of time. Um, but yeah, and uh, Deputy Mayor Gretchen Knapp is here also to help answer any of those questions. So first yeah. of all, I'll say yes, we've asked. So this is, we appreciate getting something in front of us to look at and to comment on this evening. Um, and so um, I guess we'll open it up to questions from the board now. Who wants to start? I just okay. I really have one question and, and it's directed probably to city legal. Um, and well, first I wanted to say to the office of the mayor, thank you for, for this document and, and uh, the, the, the prompt uh, response to you know, my comments last meeting at the end about you know, wanting to, to move forward. And you know, I don't know if that had any impact on, on, on getting this here, but it's, it's timely and, and uh, much appreciated. And, and you know, I view it as uh, you know, more detail on the city's policy on how they treat um, uh, 
you know, requests that come within the context of our rules and regulations, you know, page 43 of our rules and regs. So, um, you, know, t t you know, I understand it's policy and not rules and regs. So that, that's the way I see it. And, and, you know, regarding the rules and regs, in reviewing all this, I thought, you know, there's one key thing that uh, really wasn't clear when the, um, the West Side Church, you know, came before us and we, we had that process. And, and that was the role of the board in the appeal process. And it was, there was, seemed to be some uh, confusion about that, at least on my part, I didn't fully understand um, our role because I remember Chris saying something to effect that if, if, the, if the appeal is denied, then it just goes back to the director. Did I in interpret what you said correctly? Let me know the, if the appeal, I'm sorry, may I? Yeah, um, yeah. If the, Could you just talk about yeah. the appeal <laughs> process and, and the board's role in that and what it means if we were to, uh, to uh, grant an appeal or deny an appeal? The, the, the board's role is awfully limited uh, in a situation like this because the way section 24 of the rules and regs is set up right now, it, it pretty much, if, if you have voluntary annexation, that changes the way we look at extensions and uh, connections and extensions. Uh, with a voluntary annexation, we will have the engineering department review the request and make sure that it is from an engineering standpoint feasible to do the work. They would have already reviewed that in the first place knowing that the annexation was going to occur. So all of that would work together and the connection would happen at that point. Uh, without the annexation, without voluntary annexation, then you have to look at whether or not there's a, a valid waiver. Uh, the problem is, as you saw from the memo and the way that litigation has gone, the attempt to exercise our right to enforce those valid waivers has been severely curtailed uh, and, and eliminated in some instances. Uh, so the state has done damage to the contract. Uh, as a result, uh, there has become a policy to change the way that discretionary portion would have worked. If the, if the, if there was still a functioning second part of title, tw of, of section 24, then you would see the discretionary, uh, review done by, uh, the director, which then if there was an appeal of that discretionary review, the board would then be able to determine on its own whether or not they thought that the discretion that the director used was appropriate or not. You would have had that type of a real review that you could do. Under it, those six under criteria. Those, yeah, correct. Okay. Correct. But now that we've pretty much seen the eradication of that second part of 24, there really isn't much of a role to play for the board. And so that's why it's going to become incumbent upon us to, uh, I believe, rewrite 24 yet again to reflect the current administrative policy. Uh, and so what we're trying to do right now is figure out what that, what 24 looks like. I've, I've drafted something, it's in review with Corporation Council, uh, and we hope to bring something to you. Uh, so that's a very long, I think long answer, but hopefully something that is understandable. It makes more sense now, yes. Okay, thank you. Any the last meeting there was a brief discussion of the possibility of voluntary annexation without contiguity. Has that so moved forward? The, if you're referring to the idea that Mr. Carmen floated forth, there that would have been a what would have been a, a restriction on your deed, a covenant that restricts a usage or restricts the party's full enjoyment of their legal uh, rights on the on the property those types of covenants and restrictions are also a form of contract even though they get recorded we also recorded our waivers against the properties so it's just a it, at the end of the day when we reviewed what mr. Carmen had proposed it's just a different route to get to the exact same point and the city is not currently feeling real confident about it's entering into contracts of this nature to try and create annexation opportunities. And so that proposal by Mr. Carmen 
has been uh, basically we've we've rejected that offer. So you're saying that a waiver, in a sense, is similar in nature to a voluntary annexation because the ability to to get it done it's might be in danger. Coin, right? One side says we won't argue if you annex. The other says we'll annex when the time comes. But it's this, it's it's this, it's a contract entered between the property owner and subsequent property owners of that particular piece of real estate with the city, and whether or not the state would decide that those also should not be something that can be enforced. We just don't feel super comfortable right now based upon the way the litigation has gone thus far. Right. Yeah. Thanks uh, to the mayor's office for a clarification on this because it's been a real challenge for us to make sure that we're we're consistent with what city policy is and at the same time looking out for our ratepayers and then the people who are really serious about not wanting to be to put another septic tank in the ground, which we're not too excited about either. Um, so there's this balance here that we're trying to do too. So I think this is a great way to, to help us at this point. But I guess my question is, what will be the means that this gets communicated either to the, well, to the public, but, and then specifically to, um, uh, to uh, uh, people that are, are planning new developments or new buildings or things like that can we just something do through well i guess maybe it wouldn't necessarily be city planning it'd be county planning i guess since they're not in the city limits uh, I, the the good part about it is at least people know who's on first at this stage in the game um, and then i also like the point about uh how the city would would be happy to uh, to talk to uh, property owners about voluntary annexation if if that need be if if they if they want to go that direction, uh, so that they really know. Okay, if I want to be on uh, city utilities, I'm going to need to annex, or if I can, if I'm contiguous, or I'm not until I am annexed, and there's there's the answer. So I guess uh, I guess that last point is we need to make sure that uh, that the intent of the city here is is well communicated so that uh, everyone knows what the expectations are. In the second paragraph, in order to equitably protect the city's infrastructure capacity and responsibilities to taxpayers, which I know that would be like the city taxpayers, but I'm thinking about the rate payers um, who, you know, support all of this. And so um, I didn't see rate payers mentioned anywhere in here. Um, and so that, I, that was just something that I wanted to comment on. Yes. Welcome. Hi, Gretchen Knapp, Deputy Mayor. So, you know, we, we considered whether to say ratepayers or not. And I think the issue is, you know, when we talk about ratepayers, that could include people who have will serves uh, for areas that are not contiguous, that we're honoring still. And the situation we don't want to get into is, um, let's say that we were to continue with the former practice and say, well, you know, on good faith, at some point, maybe you would be annexed. So we're going to extend service because, gosh, it's just right there. You know, all of our resources have capacity, and what we don't want to have happen is reach a point in the future where, let's say there's a whole neighborhood that wants to be annexed that is contiguous, and we would have to say, well, no, we can't because we don't have capacity to serve you as part of what would be the city because we've extended all of these one-offs to, to other folks um, because they're paying the rates. So ultimately, you know, when we're talking about maintaining infrastructure and having access to these resources, that is a ratepayer issue, but it is also a city issue that's broader. So it's all connected, and we really just want to make sure that the utility has the ability to serve, in particular, its target audience of ratepayers who are also residents of the city of Bloomington. And hopefully all of this will be resolved in the future in a way that allows us to move forward uh, with less restriction than we have today, but 
it's where we are, unfortunately. So, Tyra, just to recap my understanding of this, um, that the city will honor the will serve letters, but in, unless you are contiguous to the city now and willing to be annexed, which would be approved by the city council, there will not be any extension of sewer services. That's correct. And the, C, the USB doesn't have any, this is, this is not going to be at our table anymore until there's a final decision that the city is happy with on the annexation case. That's correct. And to be clear, you know, we have uh, been public about saying this for a while now, and folks do still come to us and say, but what about me? What about me? And so we're just really constantly trying to reinforce the same message and really to be fair to everyone. You know, once we start making exceptions, then other people can come forward and say, why didn't I get an exception? And that's how we landed where we are today. So. So there won't be any other period like this is it there's there's not any extension there won't be an exception if they don't already have a will serve or meet this contiguous criteria so not like there's a future project that the city would be in favor of and but the, and they don't meet those things that's not going to get the, the hookup correct? That's correct okay I, I mean I think that's fair so I just wanted to be clear yeah. that, that if that's the policy be. it's consistent regardless of the project that's correct okay thank you um, anybody else? Okay. There are people who are contiguous who may not be aware of the policy that they can be annexed. Is that, is that statement true? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, so does it make some sense to communicate to people contiguous that this option is available to them? Because there are people in those areas that do want to be annexed and maybe some of those are contiguous. And the, the more we extend sewer to contiguous and it moves down the line, I think the better off we are. I think that's a possibility and my only hesitation is just thinking about our friends at the county you know, we're building a relationship with them, and um, when people do come and ask us uh, if I'm contiguous, I'd like to annex, of course, you know, we would say yes, we would consider that. I think if we were, you know, doing a hard sell marketing push, so to speak, um, that might be a little upsetting to the county, um, but, uh, but certainly it's public information, and the public has the right to know all of this, so we can talking certainly... Talking about hard sell, sure. I'm just talking about getting information out. Sure. I, I know of someone who lives on, I don't remember if it's the city refers them to them as the donut or the island, but um, and, and <laughs> they would like to hook up to city services and because their um, area didn't have waivers and had the signatures and um, it was not annexed. And so that's an opportunity for those folks. And then I guess that also like then there's other city services that then would need to be provided to them. So that's beyond utilities, but I mean, I guess that that does open a different uh, discussion and, and that's a good point um, okay anything else thank you thank you are there any other petitions and communications comments no okay hearing none do we have a motion to adjourn all right thank you everyone have a good evening and a great week Thank you.